This is an interesting concept, this particular verse. Uh, I was um, just in my just personal meditation and study. I just think about stuff, and then God gives me scripture, and that's how, that's how I usually fellowship. Or I'll ask a question mentally, you know, I wonder why, and then like that, and then it just the Bible sort of opens up to me. So this morning I was just meditating on some stuff, and then um, a few verses came up, and I, I, we were praying, uh, me and Alyssa, and I thought maybe I'll teach that, but when I got up here, it feels like um, we're going to go in this direction, so it's all good. Um, as you know, in this ministry, primary focus is to yours and God's relationship to reconnect and open it up to such a degree that there is no hindrance between the communication lines. You hear him clear, he hears you clear, and you guys work together to get an outcome, a particular outcome. Um, one of the truths that we have here that I, as I understand it, is that while we get, we get that God doesn't really need anything, there's one thing that he needs that he cannot that he cannot acquire without you. Most people, all people can't just readily look and there's God. You can't see him, but you can see his effects on a human's life. So our Christian testimony, proof, evidence to this world that God is God that our God is God, are the results that we achieve, acquire, that manifest in our lives. So too often in Christianity, um, we have this sort of God is good, but there's nothing happening in the people's lives. So it's almost like you have to say it because you owe it to God, even though there's nothing in your life changing. So that I believe has never been God's intention. It's never been God's plan. So somebody's unhappy back there. We'll get some oil and anoint her, him, it's <laughs> children. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back in the church on the other property next next door. You have to take a train to find it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Do you know where it is? I can get pick up my kids. Which direction is road? <laughs> like they're really out there. No, just kidding. So. Um, our pers my perspective here, as you understand, I push results heavily. Because it's the one thing that God needs to show the world that he's God. We can say Jesus Christ all, all day and all night, but it's all about Jesus, all about God. We want these changes. And it would be nice. And then usually people wait for their lives to end and then get to heaven. Then all the answers are, are provided when you can get those answers right here, right now. Okay? So let's go to Matthew <laughs> chapter 6 real quick. And then we'll come to Peter. Uh, I found, in, at least in ministry, at least at this pulpit, when I start talking, I'll say something to the Holy Spirit. I want to talk about that. So it's all good. So Matthew 26. Um, forgive me, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 26. You'll be looking for a while. Bless, bless, for, bless the Lord for you and your extra chapters, brother. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Why well, trouble you the Lord? Yeah, it's not in there. Anyways, Matthew chapter 6. You'll be looking for this verse for a long time anyways. All right, check this out. Um, this is the Lord's Prayer. So we'll start off, start off at verse 8. Matthew 6, verse 8. Be not ye therefore, don't be like them, for your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray. Since God already knows what you have need of, pray this. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done where? As it is in heaven. So give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts, and as we forgive our debtors, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for yours is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. So if God is the kingdom, power, and the glory, let's say he has the highest power. If Jesus says this is what we refer to as the Lord's Prayer, some people say, I've heard preachers um, call it the perfect prayer, even though 
there's a lot of different prayers that a lot of people will refer to as perfect. But the case being that if he's praying and teaching us to pray, this is how you pray. If you already know that God supplies, that God knows what we have need of, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, it's a basic concept. Nobody goes against what God says. That's just the way it is. Somebody did before, we call him Lucifer. He got thrown out. So now nobody goes against what God says. All right. As a result, there's a flow of knowledge, information, knowledge, will, power, manifestation. Um, for those of you who didn't know it, there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no problems, if you will, that, are, that occur in heaven because God's perfect will is done. So we're trying to get that heaven to this earth. And he says, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And this is one of those key um, ways or cheat codes, as, if I can put it in those terms. Um, go to chap this same chapter, start at verse 1, because he gets to this point. <clears throat> Take a look at verse 8 real quick. Be not therefore like unto them, for your father knows what things you have need of before you ask him. Based on that, pray like this. And in that prayer, it says your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So this is in the middle of something that he was already talking about. So in chapter six, verse one, take heed that you do not your alms, that you don't do your alms giving before men to be seen of them. In other words, the purpose that I'm giving so that people can see that I'm giving. <clears throat> Otherwise you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. So can you agree or would you agree that your reward from your father, which is in heaven, is his will being done on earth as it is in heaven. Can you accept that? Because watch how he says, this is how you get his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Verse two, therefore, when you do your alms, don't sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of. Verily I say to you, verse th their reward is, verse two, that men recognize, recognition. So we're doing, we're, we're, we're kissing up as it were. <laughs> we're doing it for the recognition of humans as opposed to the reward of God's will being done on my earth as it is in heaven, right? So what we're trying to do is bypass the will of men to get God's will and my will to agree that what I need done on this planet, his will is manifesting and I get the reward. The reward is his will being done on earth, my earth, my physical life as it is in heaven. You guys see that? Verse three, but when you do your alms, let not your left hand know what your right hand does, so that your alms, it's giving. So when you give, maybe in, even though when you're doing it in secret, in other words, this is your motive, why you do what you do. That your alms may be in secret and your father which sees in secret himself shall reward you. What's openly means? We can see your results. We can see the changes that are happening in your life. It's one of those things that, it's a positive and a negative with, with um, results, but at the same time, it's, to me, it's always an opportunity. So if I'm not getting results, I can be discouraged. Watch, or I can make an adjustment. If you're changing a tire, and there's three hours later, and you still haven't changed that tire, tire something's wrong. Do you just quit and walk, take the bus the rest of your life? Or you figure out what you're doing wrong, adjust, Google, Everybody can be a rocket science with Google nowadays, right? I can build anything, <laughs> right? So figure it out, work it out, get some kind of information, knowledge, education, get some education, get some knowledge, understanding, and then apply it and then change the tire. So in the same way, as, our, as Christians, we have this traditional excuse. It's very religious, it's very traditional, and it, in my opinion, it's weak. Kind of mellow out my man parts. Um, the man side of me. Um, I don't take well to whining, me personally. Because I, I feel like you made, you've got so much. What are you crying about? Life, God, his word, salvation, his spirit. You got somebody like me who explains stuff to the... To the dust. <laughs> like, how do you not get that, right? And then still, well, why is this not happening? It's like, oh my goodness, great. Take charge. So, anyways, I, I don't in conversation where people, right, there's people that I train at work. First law, first law, don't whine to me. I don't want to hear you whining. I'm the last person who wants to hear you whining. <clears throat> 
Because to me, I feel like a, a person who is a copy of God in a human form should walk how? The victor or the victim? Victor. You see what I mean? That mentality in you is what we're aiming for to open up a communication line between you and God so it makes sense when he says, assume control. Take charge. You can have that. You can do that. In his mind, this is the way it works. But if I have that victimized, I just don't see how, Lord. And I'm shrinking away from the answer, protecting confusion, lack, insufficiency. And it's, 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 it's a crazy idea. You turn on the news, all oh, these poor people, and then all of a sudden you assume that identity. That's not you, man. It's not you, woman. It's none of us. When you took on being born again, there was an infusion on a spiritual level of your genetics that changed your bloodline. You went from lack to abundance. You went from weak to strong. You were born again with those genetics. So your God is your father that we associate has all this power. If your dad has all this power and you have, you share the same bloodline, you see, what I mean? there's not anything you can't afford. There's not anything you can't do. It's just a matter of you allowing his views and perspectives to infuse you. We were born again into a very wealthy family. But our mind mindset or our perspective of poverty hinders us from enjoying it. Because there are places we just won't go. There's things we won't do. There's things we won't buy. We won't even consider it. Because we look at what we have versus what we've got in Christ Jesus. Even in terms of being encouraged to move forward in life, people will count more, they'll focus more on what it'll cost them, not realizing what it'll cost them. Yeah. <clears throat> I had this friend growing up, she and her family, regular, regular everyday people, somehow got it in her head, because we were talking about just moving ahead in life, it was, it's just a habit of me. We getting, last night we were having a conversation with family and the passion came out. <laughs> And my older brother's like, whoa, 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 calm down, bro, calm down. I said, forgive me, I was just, um, uh, you don't say that to me. <laughs> mm, don't say that to me. So, in other words, you can't talk that victimized thing to me, and I don't just go, shut that mess down, because I don't want it in my presence. Not because I'm self-righteous, but I, just, I don't want to entertain it. This is my brother, this is my sister, this is my dad. I don't hear that best in this, you know. So, anyways, wow, it cuts me. But... <clears throat> So it's friends, regular family, everyday family. And then we were talking about moving ahead in life way back when. And then she said, but I don't want a car. I said, so you're cool with walking? She goes, yeah, because when you buy a car, you have to get gas. You have to change the tires. You have to pay the insurance. You have to make the payments. And when the engine breaks, you have to fix that. So she's looking at what it'll cost her in the interim versus the life that it'll cost her that she'll never enjoy. So... As Christians, when we give our time, effort, money, support, love, affection, mercy, grace to people, <clears throat> it might cost you a little bit something, but look at the glory on the other end. Follow? So, <clears throat> it doesn't matter what it costs us right now because God knows what I need. You have to understand that. When you've got a wealthy partner, who cares what project you take on? The partnership is designed, me and you, anything. Okay? So these people here was the example that Jesus is using. You're doing it so you can get recognition of men and feel better, but nothing changed. Whereas I'm doing it for the purpose of my partnership in Christ Jesus. This works for him. It works for me. This it doesn't matter if anybody and everybody knows it. <clears throat> One of the training um, principles that I teach, I... I teach it in different terms at work. There's one guy in particular, he wants recognition all the time. I, I killed it, I wanted to do this, so on and so forth. And I said, that's great. I'm, I'm, yeah, just uh, nobody says anything. I said, if you're doing it for recognition, you're never gonna move anywhere in life. Because if you can't do it and just be happy that you did it and then move on, you're always gonna wait for somebody to say, okay, so as a result, you're the victim of the victor. That's the way I see it. 
So he's, so as I explain it to him, it's the same principles I teach you. I just use di different terms, whether it's cabinetry, whether it's whatever in construction, whatever the case may be. And it's the same principle. So when you and I are trying to do something so that people recognize versus doing something because this is what you intend on doing. For example, when you're giving, what's the purpose of giving? Protect, okay, when we tithe, the tithe protects the seed that I sow. But why do I sow? We talked about it last week. For abundance. How do I get out of poverty? I give. That's it. Whatsoever man sows, that shall he also reap. The power to get wealth. One seed produces the tree. That tree has how many seeds? Lots. One to that many. So that is a principle by which we can increase. The wealthiest people in the world are investors. What do they do? They sow, they reap. Right? In different terms. Whether they buy cryptocurrency, real estate, doesn't matter. They put out a little bit in their minds, and then they get back a lot. Right? How do poverty people do it? How do people in poverty do it? Wait on somebody to give them a check. If you got to wait for somebody else, you are the victim. That is not our bloodline of nations. Our bloodline is the almighty God. Amen? And if his will is to be done on, say it, my earth, your earth is your physical life. As it is in heaven, I don't want anything to block his will on earth like nothing blocks his will in heaven. Amen? All right, verse 5. When you pray, <clears throat> don't be like the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues, corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. But verily I say to you, they have their reward, the recognition of humans. Wow, you're so wonderful. But nothing changed, bro. Verse 6. But when you pray, enter your closet. When you have shut the door, pray to your Father, which is in secret. Your Father, which sees in secret, secret shall reward you. Everybody's going to see the results. That's the intention. <clears throat> I'm going to add this to you. When you pray, don't pray in fear. God, if this doesn't happen, I'll, this is going to fall apart. Don't prophesy doom and gloom over your life. For a lot of people, they, they, oh, this is that positive confession stuff. It's not. You're just following the principles of the word, right? We've all been in, in, in groups where we're all going along, and then somebody is just, just really downer. Everything's broken, everything's messed up, and the joy and the, and the flow just starts sinking. Nobody leaves with a smile, right? There's power that when you show up and you're bringing the sunshine, it lights versus you bring the doom and the gloom and it sucks life out of them. Just, just in just everyday conversation, you don't have to get religious about it, just everyday conversation, everybody prefers being with somebody who is uplifting than they are discouraging. When you're feeling down or when you're feeling up, encouragement is always welcome. Whether you're feeling down or, or up, discouragement is never welcome. Amen. So take a look at verse um, <clears throat> uh, 16. This is, he's continuing that verse 6, is, or chapter 6 of Matthew is talking about motive, why it is that you do what you do. Moreover, when you fast, don't be like the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men, I'm fasting. Oh, wow, that guy's really holy. So... We, we meet a lot of those folks in these big meetings. And it's like, we'll just be talking about, you know, praise the Lord, this, that, and the other. Oh, yeah, I fast three times. I can't get anybody to fast. Oh, I don't, what do I care? You don't look like you could. Anyways. I'll, I'll step out of this. I'll just jump right out and go back to the Bible because there's the me, then there's Jesus. And Jesus would be like, Thomas, ugh. Yeah, whatever, Dad. Look, you pick me. I was your idea. <laughs> Man, they're having way too much fun back there. Verse 17. But you, when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, that you appear not unto men to fast, but unto your Father which is in secret, and your Father which sees where? Shall reward you openly. What's the secret place? Okay. Between God and you, does he see a door or does he see a human? with his spirit in it. So in his mind, when he sees you, what part of you is secret? Okay, the spirit is secret. The collective, what he's saying, the reason that you do what you do is the secret place. 
Your motive is where God dwells. And he can tell why you do it for the right or for the wrong reason. Okay? So when you get accustomed to this, it's, it's one of the most powerful truths that makes it easy to make connections and break connections in terms of people. And you can do it without smacking people or nothing like that. So it's like hurting anybody's feelings. But <clears throat> God knows why we do what we do. You hang out with him, you start knowing why people do what they do. Follow? Since God is very efficient, he spends less time with the people who are, as co who are not as cooperative, more time with people that are cooperative. Follow? So often as believers and just people who are trying to get life to move forward in our lives, we, we run into and we meet people that lend to our progress and people who take from our progress. But the talk might be all the same, but we don't know if this is the better connection than the next. This, you hang out with God, you find out which one is wasting your time. As a result, you become extremely efficient. Now, here's the, here's the, how do I say this? This, it's, it's a really powerful jump. But as a result, it leaks off of you so that when people conversate who are always just random, they start getting focused because you're there. Hear what I'm saying? A lot of times you're talking with folks and they're just kind of rambling on and it's like, I'll use my wife as an example. She does HR um, consulting. Um, <clears throat> it's her own business. HR doctor is, is her business. So she gets contracts with hospitals and she specializes in hospitals because of all the wow laundry list of requirements and state regulations and stuff. So <clears throat> when people come to somebody for counseling, she'd be the counselor. They like to randomly talk about stuff that's irrelevant to the case. But as her reputation starts developing, people start coming and all of a sudden the dog doesn't matter. Me running out of gas this morning doesn't matter. And they get right to the point turning 45 minutes into a five minute conversation, solve the problem. So if the average in their corporation of 170,000 people is, is their employee numbers, something a little bit higher than that, but it's a global corporation, it's just one of her contracts. If they're accustomed to their entire uh, superstar HR department, in three months they accomplish 40 cases solved in the same amount of time she by herself solves well over 100. That's efficiency. So, <clears throat> based on their data, because they track all the, anyways, it's corporation stuff, corporate stuff, just stats. So, when they look at that and they see this person going boom, 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 and then now the CEOs are calling, but they're not calling with their whole history of life. Back in 75, it's like, sh just get to the point, man. She doesn't have to tell them to get to the point. She starts drawing. God's will is being done right here where she works every day versus I wish I had a break. You guys get what I'm saying? So I, I wish somebody would give me this. I wish I could get a this. I wish I could get that from somebody else. This, the wishing stops. You just be you the way God intended you and the world starts aligning. So now she makes about double what I'm. <laughs> it's a trip. So she's a, she's a great student because we counsel a lot. Um, she'll, I'll get home from work and it's, cause I'm all dirty downtown guy. She's all, you know, uptown girl over there. It's like, how'd you guys get together? I don't know, beat up her boyfriend, I think. Anyways, <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> Sorry. So ghetto, forgive me. He says, I'm, I'm a new man. Thank the Lord. <laughs> I'm not violent anymore. Thank God. Anyways. And she, it's weird because she, she can see right past the human and see to see the anointing and the wisdom and get the advice and then apply it. Like, here's a simple one. Here's a very simple, 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 simple. Get guys who, or girls, whoever she's, clients that she's talking to, and they're just kind of, oh, I don't know if I'm doing great, so on and so forth. And then she would end the conversation like, wow, you know what? Thanks a lot. You're the best. And the conversation just changes. Like, whoop. 
just saying you're the best, you're the best. The, just that small encouragement and all of a sudden the conversation goes from nothing's working. It's like, yeah, I think we can do this. Watch, it's her environment, but these people are in it and they're sinking. She shows up, you're the best, pow. Because regardless of where you are, discouragement is never welcome. Encouragement always is. Amen? All right. But that person ought to pay the price. Well, then if you, put, if you want somebody to pay the price for their guilt, you pay yours first. Then when you get done, come and tell me how, how it was. Because <laughs> Jesus put it like this. Let the, first, let the guy without sin, let him throw the first rock. If not, go home. All right, so we're not here to pick on everybody's problems. Amen. We're just bringing solutions. All right, here we go. Verse 18. That you appear not unto men to fast, but unto your father, which is in secret, and your father, which is in secret, which sees in secret. Where's the secret place? Your motive. Why it is that you do. Nobody would know but God, but you hang out with God, all of a sudden you know. It's how Jesus figured out what people were trying to do. <clears throat> Shall reward you openly. Verse 19. Lay up not for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust do corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust do corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. <clears throat> so if he's talking about treasures in heaven and not on earth, he's not talking about not having treasures, but a place where it's safe. So in light of the context, he's talking about motive. Why you do what you do, if you're doing it for God, you're always safe. Okay? If you're good doing it for a godly reason, this doesn't mean you're always trying to support the ministry in some way, shape, or form. But <clears throat> Let me take that back. While you're living your best life, you're supporting the ministry. Can I put in those terms? You haven't written a check, haven't given a dime. But if you're living your best life based on what you're learning from here, you're giving testament to the positive, if you will, affect the, the, the results, um, the testament to the ministry and its effectiveness. How's that? Okay. So as you get results, the ministry gets glory. Amen. Just the way it is. So <clears throat> if you're laying up for yourself treasures on earth, not in heaven, what exactly are you doing? You're doing it for the wrong reasons. The wrong reasons will always get limited changes, but not permanent effects, all right? So verse 21, for where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. Light of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. That just means you, if you have the right motive. Weird words back in the day, but that's the way they talked in the King James Version. Light of the body is the eye, and if your eye be single, if you have the right motive then your whole body shall be full of light. What's the body interpreted as based on what we understand how the earth was, your physical life is full of light. Everything becomes obvious. Everything becomes godly, everything. I'm not trying to say that, you know, just this perfect little Christian life. If his will be done on, and you're talking about promises coming to pass, healing, changes, encouragement, um, dreams that every just shattered that are now being recovered and restored, hope where people gave up and now they want to fight again. God shows up, everything moves in the right direction. Whole life thing being full of it means God, everything in my life moving in the right direction. Not just part of it, not just some of it, not just a little bit. Oh, the whole body shall be full of light. Verse 23, but if your eye be evil, your whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore that light that is in you, the, re the reason that you do what you do is darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters. Either you'll either he'll hate the one, love the other, or else he'll hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Right reason, wrong reason. All right? Verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life. In other words, don't worry. Obviously, you got to think about what you're doing before you do it. Therefore, I, I say to you, take... I don't want to say that. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more, much better than they are? Which of you, <clears throat> by taking thought or warring, can add one inch 
cubit would be a foot and a half unto his stature, how tall you are. And why take you thought for raiment clothing? Consider the, the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, they don't work hard, neither do they spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, provide for you, feed you, support you, encourage you, provide what you need, require and want, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought. What's that mean? Don't worry about it. You ever catch yourself in a conversation, maybe at the house, and you're just whining about how you're going to pay this, how are you going to pay this? If this doesn't happen, this is not going to pay. Mammon. <clears throat> for a lot of people, mammon is money. And for, if I look at the context that he's talking about, where I'm doing it for me versus I'm doing it because me and God. So I've got this partner, and Mammon, for me, the way that he explained it, I believe it's the Holy Spirit explained it a long time ago. I will compromise. I'm just using this as an example. Like, for example, <clears throat> I got a hundred bucks. Somebody just gave me a hundred bucks. How much is the tithe? Ten bucks. But I got a bill for a hundred bucks. What should I do? Watch. If I'm trying to use God's laws to change life versus... Oh, well, I'll just wait next week. I'll do it again next week. Like diets, right? We'll start it next week. <clears throat> what should I do? Tithe. So you're gonna now you're gonna risk the hundred dollar bill because now you're not 90, 90 bucks. So the tithe is not giving. The tithe is the insurance over the giving. See this, uh, I'll just share it with you how I do it. I just give God a hundred bucks. If the tithe is 10, I've sold 90. What should I get back? I could pay that bill 10 times over shortly hereafter. But watch, when if they get mad, all of a sudden, this is one of the most amazing things. God will reward you openly openly, which means this person's attitude all of a sudden changed. I thought you needed it. Yeah, don't worry about it. A bill that I was sweating over a hundred bucks because I'm over here, oh, about the time, about the time. <clears throat> then I come back, all of a sudden they needed it so bad, now they don't need it. What happened? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You understand, I'm never victim when I'm in charge. If the money controls me, I'm, I'm the victim. I'm the slave. <clears throat> Watch. If God controls me, I'm the victim. I'm the slave. That's why he doesn't control us. He says, Thomas, this is this. This is this. He gave his people this choice. He said, behold, I said before you life and death. And then he says, in case some of you didn't know which one, choose life. He said, choose life. I'm telling you, it's better. So we get these insights right here, and it might be a, a thousand bucks, might be 10. It doesn't matter what it is. The point is, am I going to move motivated by my fear of lack map? And I am willing to compromise my commitment to my partner in order to acquire this. That's Mammon. What I'm willing to compromise in order to whatever, ease, pressure, um, stop the pressure, um, to stop the fear. And yet the motive that I'm doing this for is because of fear. We'll get in arguments over money. That's what people do on this planet. They'll fight over it. They'll stress over it. They'll call this guy, then the other, all the different, the links of the people, this person's holding this up and this person holding that up and this person holding that up. And then we call them all and yell at them and get mad as though we have no super par partner that's helping us behind the scenes to adjust life, my earth, to allow his will to be done on my earth. My earth right here, I need these done. My father in heaven already knows what I have need of before I ask. So Thomas, don't fall into this trap. No man can serve two masters. Hate the one, serve the other, vice versa. Therefore, don't worry. 
It gets better, praise the Lord. <laughs> Worf, verse 30. Wherefore, based on that, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is... <sighs> no, I, I, I get it. Which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. <clears throat> it felt like God just said, don't be discouraged because I know you wanted to talk about First Peter. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, I did, but whatever. <clears throat> and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not be much more... How... Shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of? How do I know my faith is little? Because I'm sweating it. You can sweat it so much you just lose your faith. <laughs> you don't believe nothing now. Amen. Folks, check yourselves this weekend, this week as we go along through this week. And if those hardships come up, because <clears throat> we can get into that pattern and not realize it's a seasonal thing that we do every so often, right? Like at the coming toward the end of the year, you get to see, start seeing, watching TV, you used to get these commercials, right? Uh, it's flu season, did you get a flu shot? Because it's about that season. So in our lives, we can have that same season every other week. We're working, don't have any hours. And then as soon as the hours end, that season starts. Season of sweating it. Season of, oh, what are we gonna do? A month goes by, what are we going to do? Watch. And then all of a sudden, uh, we're having some work, and everything is great, and now we're in that season. Then the next time it happens, fall into the same traps. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And you'll notice that month after month after year after year, and it never actually collectively never changed. That's how you get stuck in the same rut. Because you're just up and down and up and down and up and down instead of, thank you, Lord God, you supply all my need according to your riches and glory. I don't care what I see. I believe God. If you can make that switch, you'll notice that those seasons of lack start diminishing because they're not as effective in holding you back like they used to. Lack has a way, the residual effects, it doesn't have to be stuck on your shoes, it's stuck in your mind. Well, you're living currently in, an, in more of an abundance than it was before, but it's still in there. And that you want to keep. That's why he says long life, long living, not long surviving. So we can live in a little bit. All right, we got some, some good pays, yada, yada, yada. And then we're all happy. So now I'm happy because I've got money. Versus happy regardless. You guys understand that? When you cross that particular threshold, it's one of the most delivering things in the whole wide world. Outside, they'll be looking at you like, wow, this guy is so irresponsible. That's because you don't see the God that backs me up, because why? He sees me in secret, but he will reward me, and you're gonna see me drive it. You're gonna see me wear it. You're gonna see me living in it. You're gonna see me the life that I'm living. is not just falling out of the sky. I intentionally believe God. Amen. Make this better. Check this out. Verse 32. After all these things do the Gentiles seek. When you hear the word Gentile, don't think as somebody who's not Jew, even though a lot of people apply it that way. Gentile is somebody without a contract with God. For after all these things do the people without a contract with God <clears throat> seek. For your heavenly Father knows what you have that you have need of all these things. Doesn't God know? Of course. Don't ask the question anymore. But there's a way that He, there's a system that He installed for us to engage it. Turn, push the buttons, if you will, pull the levers, turn the wheels, whatever we have to do on our end to keep the flow flowing. Amen. Amen. Verse thirty-three. Here's your answer. Seek when. The kingdom of God and what he considers right. What's the right decision in this? I've got a hundred bucks. The bill is a hundred bucks. The tithe is 10 bucks. I can't pay the bill with 90. What's the right? What's God's righteousness in this? What's the right thing to do? Give the one of the, <laughs> one of the most amazing things. Yeah, exactly. That's the right thing. What people don't realize is that you'll notice that that hundred dollar situation will come again. It, it, in a few weeks, a month, it'll come again. And you'll be in the same position. You never actually changed level. Because you're still picking at 
What can I afford? Who can I afford? What can we do? So that $100 comes again, could be $200 in a different package, same devil, trying to trap me in a lack. Amen. He said, you give a little, you reap a little. We saw that. Go see the tape from last week. Right? So <clears throat> how do we have all these things added? All right, let's have some examples of God seeking him first. All right, seeking him first. Look, I'm about to make a decision. Should I talk to God first? Seek first. Just counsel. Just counsel. What if you prayed and you're not really sure? What should I do? And you're not sure. Don't make an unsure decision. How's that? Are you sure? No. Well, then don't do it. One of the, one of the safest things we could do, don't do it. If you're mad, should you do it? If you're sad, should you do it? But he said he loved me. Should you do it? You guys understand, right? These are all simple things. You know the answers. But when you go home, apply them. Quit choking on it. Quit fumbling over simple stuff like this. Get you out of the hundred and start dealing with a thousand. Get you out of a thousand, start dealing with a hundred thousand. Get you out of a hundred thousand, start dealing with a million. And guess what? I'm going to say something. <clears throat> I don't think I've said it for a while. <clears throat> the concept of faith, the power of faith in God does not distinguish the difference between believing for a dollar or a million dollars. Has no difference. The power of faith can produce an entire universe. Watch. A little bug. Speck of dirt. A whole human being. Faith. Same power. Just applied in different ways can produce anything. Whether it's healed from cancer or a sore throat, completely irrelevant. A dead man, blind man, deaf man, born deaf, born blind, born crippled, or a person who has a hangnail. Faith has no, I don't know if I can do that. You can do anything. We see things hard, easy. God sees all things possible. First Peter one. <laughs> it's one of the reasons why I trust him so much. I let it go, it gave it to me anyway. Jesus, you're the best in the whole world. <laughs> wow. And over the years, we've come to a lot of people who their focus wanted was around things or like this, this, that, and the other situation, you know, including um, uh, relationships and stuff. And um, the hardest cases... Um, not hard for me or hard for God because God threw me, um, but hardest for them to make the change was letting go of what they wanted so bad that the want of it so bad was the problem. So that if they could trust God, so just for example, this one young lady, she came up, she's, um, she's stuck between a, a guy that she was with, they weren't married, and the guy was ex and they had a lot of drama back and forth and she's just been coming here uh, she was coming here probably within the first four years of ministry and um <clears throat> i just remember because she was about this tall and she looked up like this and her eyes were all big because she was had this big hope and i'm like i'm supposed to give this lady answers right so she comes up and, you know, I just want this, that, and the other. And then we sat down in council and told that was one of the things that she had to let it go, that if she allowed God to fill that space, I need him, I want so bad. If you allow, just move him out, put God in there, and everything will be resolved. So we didn't know each other very long. She just came, attended a few services, so on and so forth. And for whatever reason, she believed everything. 
And while she was telling me, she was kind of like begging for answers and stuff. She's, her eyes were like this big, full of tears going down her face. And, and I just grabbed her by the shoulders. This is what I told her, I said, piece of cake. And she almost like, did, did you hear what I just said? Cause to her, it was this big to God. You see what I mean? To us, that hundred dollar ninety is a dilemma. It was a huge thing to God. You do realize I made the universe, right? Yeah. Paying the rent piece of cake. You have to see it that way, folks, because that's how the flow works. So his power comes, hits me, and the gate is closed. I can't think like that, God. Can't get the result. So we keep hammering on that gate till it's open every day, all day, while I'm there or not, whether you're here or not. You're at home at peace. Boats rocking like crazy. People are bailing water. You're like, God's not a liar. I'm good to go. Tie this in. We're good. I got seed in the ground. Peace. Not irresponsible. Peace. So I told her a piece of cake. Counsel with them one session. The week after. He goes to the front. Nobody, nobody announced anything. Pastor, I just have something really important. He comes to the front. She's sitting right there. Opens the ring box. Will you marry me? It was hard for her, piece of cake for God. It might be hard for you, it's a piece of cake for God. So don't get in the way. Let God be God in your situation. Handle it, adjust it, fix it. This is our number one issue. We're gonna read it in First Peter chapter one, and then we'll be done. Okie dokie. Verse nine. I need you to see the weight of the intention of this verse. Receiving the end, the ultimate goal is the end, the ultimate goal. If God did all these 66 books, thousands of people's lives over, through thousands of years to teach us this one thing, please get this one thing. Receiving the ultimate goal of your faith, saving your mind, your will, and your emotions. You save those, everything's good to go. The reason why the money is such a hardship is because you think it's a hardship, not because it's hard for God. Here's an example. There might be some people in this very room that other people in this very room gave up on, and here they are. Because, yeah, it was hard for us. I didn't realize it was that easy for God. As you realize it, allow him to be, yeah, piece of cake, honey, piece of cake, son, piece of cake, brother, piece of cake, sister. It's struggle for you. It's not a struggle for God. There's some people where we thought that person is never going to give their life to Jesus Christ. Might be sitting next to him. You guys understand? We just didn't realize God was that much, that, that easy for him. But although it's easy for him because it's a partnership, both partners have to agree. So I either allow my mind, will, and emotions to accept his views, his perspectives, his choices, and just move with it, or I allow, allow the devil to keep me in fear so that I don't move at all. So it was one of my key ingredients in life because I used to always blame everybody. That's why I'm broke. When I found the secret to the tithe, my broke was done. Not because it was about the money, but because I realized this whole time that I had been suffering in lack, it wasn't because somebody made me, it was because me was making me. Are you kidding me? Not only is the devil trying to keep me broke, but I'm helping him? Are you kidding me? It made me mad. <laughs> I'm like, dumb, 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 you know, my, to myself. Just, so I changed it, and I, the, the revelation that it wasn't about the giving is how I saw it increase, lack, insufficiency, poverty, all that stuff. So how I related to it, and that's what led me to believe that even though salvation has been provided for us over 2,000 years, you never got the benefit until you chose. You believed it, you received it, pow! Eternity for life. Life for eternity. Constant, consistent life. You guys imagine that. If all of God's will is so powerful, yet it's stopped at your will. Let's adjust your will. Because the choices we make is based on how we think. So we adjust the way we think, and then we make better choices. And then life, and now we're not stuck on a hundred bucks anymore. 
good to go. I'd like to get out of that too. You know, <laughs> I would. There's, there's a weird, we could be at levels like I'd like to get out of payments. I'd like to uh, get out. I have to having to wait six months before I can do this to my car. I want to get that car, but I can't get it because I got to do this, that, and the other. We can get out of that. And this is one of the ways you don't, don't struggle with the little knowing that the little is the seed. You struggle with the seed. What are you doing to the harvest? Guess what? We flow with the seed, flow with the harvest. Amen. Father, we thank you for your love and kindness. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for keeping it simple. We appreciate it, Lord God. Thank you for feeding your people, Lord God, because I know you ministered, and somebody's like, oh, my Lord, he's talking right to me. That's you, Jesus. It's not me. But thank you for taking the time to reminding us that our God is God, that you made everything. It should be a piece of cake for you. Forgive us, Lord, for getting in the way, for doubting, for worrying, for stressing. We want those things that people without a contract with God seek all their lives. We want them added to us by doing it the way you said. Seek you first so that these things are added to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand up. Give God a hand. Praise the Lord. Somebody.